Hello and welcome back everybody. Uh, in today's video we're going to talk about the type info object inside of the Python com library. So the type info object lives inside of our uh, what was it? Pi I dispatch object. And we've already talked about what the Pi I dispatch object is. This is really kind of our interface for any given particular com object. So this is how we take a certain method and we invoke it. This is how we um, get information about our particular com object. A lot of good information in here. And if you remember in the previous video, I did go over one particular method. It was called get type info. And I didn't go into too much detail about it because I wanted to dedicate an entire video with it. So the get type info method returns another object in itself. And so I actually have that documentation right up here. And so uh, basically what the pi i type info object is, is it's an OLE automation type info object. Um, it, and they give some dots, you know, it's derived from pi i unknown. But really with this particular object, the way I like to think about it is it has all the information about my particular object. So things like um, all the method names, all the method constants, all the method and, uh, you know, what is it? All the method parameters, optional parameters. There's things like documentation strings. Um, a lot of good information in here. There's also something called variable description, which returns, again, another object. Function description, that returns another object. Type attribute, that returns another object. And each one of these objects contain their own little unique quirks, and in some cases, the same information that we could get at this high level. So really, when would you want to use this? If you want to get all the information about a particular object, the pi i type info object is going to be the object you want to go with. The nice thing is it's actually relatively easy to work with once you know how to work around it and understand where you need to get certain pieces of information to leverage them in another uh, method. Um, that was probably one of the most confusing things out of this entire process is there's no examples. Um, there's almost no examples out there. And so it was a lot of it was experimenting, seeing how other people were implementing it in C++ and other uh, coding language to understand really how you're supposed to be using these particular functions. So hopefully you guys find this useful and you won't have to go through the headache that I put myself through. Okay, so the first thing that we're gonna do is obviously we're gonna import our Python com library. We need that in order to get our dispatch interface. And so we'll create a new variable, we'll call it Excel dispatch. It's gonna equal our Python com module and then we're gonna call the new method and then pass through the program ID for our Excel application object. So this will return a dispatch interface um, that belongs to our Excel application. So now we have a way of working with that particular Excel application. So I'll run that. Okay, so it looks like it went fine. And then from here, I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna call it Excel type info. And then I'm gonna call my Excel dispatch interface. And then I'm gonna call my get type info method. The get type info method is going to return our type info object. That's all it's gonna do. And to prove that to you is I'm going to take my Excel type info and put it in the help function to see if we can get some information on it. Perfect. So it looks like it went through great. We can now see all the methods and properties that exist with this particular object. The one that we're going to be working with first is the get documentation method. So this returns information related to documentations for any given method uh, that belongs to this particular uh, object things like you know if I wanted to get activate things like along that um, I'm going to pass through uh, a certain uh, method member ID uh, we explained what this was in a previous video with the Excel dispatch interface that's really the ID for any given method that belongs to this object so I'm going to create a new variable called my doc and then I'm going to call the Excel type info object and then I'm going to call the get documentation method and I hope I spelled that right, but I didn't spell it right. Oh, I always misspell it. Um, and then I'm going to get the one for quit. No, undo. This is undo. And so the member ID for the undo method is 303. And then this is going to return back a tuple. If you don't believe me, just go to the documentation. And you can go right here where it says get documentation. If you right click, you will see that we get a tuple back where the first item is the name. The second is the doc string, the third is the help context, and the fourth is the help file. If I remember correctly, doc string pretty much always comes back blank. I haven't encountered a method yet that has shown me a actual value for that. 
uh, but everything else should be fine. So if I run this, I'm gonna take my, my doc variable and then I'm simply just indexing it for the information that I need. And then finally, I show it all down here, all nice and pretty together. So you can tell here, this was the name of our method. This is the doc string, so there's nothing here. This is the help context file. Not really sure how I leverage this yet. I'm gonna to try to keep looking into that. And if I find an answer, I will put it in the documentation. And then here is the link to the help file. Uh, so this is for VBA. Funny thing about this, when I actually put this into my directory, it doesn't exist. So I'm not sure about that yet. I gotta still look into it. Uh, you can download it. So you can download this file if you want, but for whatever reason, it's giving it to us, but we don't necessarily have it on our system. So it might just be internally stored there, but it's not actually verifying that we have this file on our system. If somebody comes across why this is, or if they actually have it on their system, feel free to share it because I'm kind of curious myself. <laughs> so that's the get documentation method. We're gonna move on to the next one. This one is probably gonna the most, probably the longest one, and I would say has the most useful information. It's called the get type attribute method. So again, I'm gonna create a new variable. I'm gonna call it Excel type attribute. I'm gonna call my Excel type info object, and then I'm gonna call the get type attribute method. This returns another object back to me. Again, we can go to the documentation. We see here, get type attribute retrieves a type attribute object that contains the attributes of the type description. Not very useful if you look at it at first glance, but if you go to the actual documentation itself, you see all of this. So you'll get things like the IID. This is how we can use this to, again, plug into it if we wanna dispatch it in Win32. The LCID, the ID of the constructor, the ID of the destructor, the size of an instance of this type, the type kind, the number of functions, this is very important the number of variables, this is very important, the number of Im implemented interfaces, this is very important, the minor version number of this object, the major version number of this object, type flags, alignment, all sorts of good information, love it. Okay, so we call the get type attribute method, that returns our type attribute structure, and then from here, I'm just gonna get some information about this particular object, and then I'm gonna print out each one of the properties that belongs to it. So this is again, all pre-typed for us. Um, I didn't wanna to have to do it. I didn't think that was necessary to do in the video. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. And we get back all this. So it tells us all the data descriptors defined here. These are simply the ones that I'm defining up here. Now, what I did make sure is I tried to put the definition here. And I also said, if you wanted to index it, this would be the index. So if you put in Excel type attribute, um, you know, three or something like that, it would still return that particular value. So keep in mind, this is if you're slicing it, I personally like to just use the actual property itself. I think that's a little bit more intuitive. And when I'm looking back at my code, I'm not having to guess. And then we see all the information to return back here. The one I'm probably gonna be most concerned about next is gonna be the number of functions. There's another one called the number of implemented, uh, where is it? Implemented interfaces, which is this one, and the number of variables. These are both gonna be very useful in the next couple examples. So from here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of the information I got back up of there, and I'm gonna use it in a new, um, new example, basically. So maybe I want all of the, I want all the, I want the, I would need to get the number of implemented interfaces and then I'm gonna go and grab all of them from my type info object. So the first thing I'll do is I'll define a new variable called number of flags. I'll call my Excel type attribute object and then I'll take my C implied types or implemented types. And then there's an S at the end. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna loop, create a loop and we'll see how this loop is being leveraged. So we'll say for i in range zero to the number of flags that we have, I want you to call a certain method. I'm gonna display, where is it? Excel type info, so my type info object, and I'm going to call the get implemented type flags. And then I'm gonna pass through i. Now, in this case, there's only one. 
and so it doesn't really do anything useful for us. But if I still have it up, I can't remember if I do. We're taking our type info object and now we're calling one of the methods that belong to it, leveraging the information that we got from our type attribute structure. You're gonna see this multiple times. We take information from our type attribute structure and we're leveraging it in our type info object. So again, just, just keep that in mind. And then with this one, uh, all this one does is it retrieves the implemented type flags enumeration for one of the implemented interfaces or base interfaces in the type description. Uh, most examples I've worked with, it's only one that returns back and I still have to get the constants because I haven't been able to find a good list of all the constants for these particular type flags, but I will be putting that in the documentation. So this is again just for you guys to demonstrate how to access this information if you needed to get it. Now the one that I think is probably most useful is the number of functions. And so this one you will see very quickly. And so actually this is the old part, I don't need that. I'm gonna define the number of functions to equal my Excel type attribute object. And then I'm gonna call the C functions property. So the count of the functions, and then the same is really the same up here. I'm just gonna create a loop. And instead of doing number of flags, I'm gonna do number of functions. I said, eh, did number of funds. Okay, and then from here, there's some information that we can now leverage about these particular functions. And so one of them is get a function description. This is very useful when you wanna get things like the name um, and things along that information. So very useful. And uh, you'll see kind of how this is gonna be leveraged in a little bit. So we'll say Excel function description equals Excel type info. And then we're gonna call the get function description method. I'm gonna pass through my I. And then from here, I'm gonna get a bunch of different information. So next I'm gonna get the documentation string for that particular given method or property. So I'm gonna call my Excel type info object. I'm gonna call my get documentation string, or sorry, get documentation uh, method, my apologies. I'm gonna call my function description object, and I'm gonna call one of the properties that belongs to it. One of the properties that belongs to it is something called the member ID. Remember, the member ID defines that particular function description. And then down here, really all I'm doing is I'm calling the different properties that belong to this function description. And then the other one that I'm really concerned about at this point is the member ID. Well, sorry, not the member ID, but getting the name of the method with the member ID. So I'm gonna take this one, I'm gonna copy it, and then, where is it, get names. And then I'm gonna call my Excel function description and my member ID property. I will walk through just some of these. So the first one is arguments. This is the number of arguments for that given function. The next one is the member ID for that function or you know method property, whatever you wanna call it. Um, and then this one is the function kind. We have virtual, static, or dispatch only. The number of optional parameters, the function flags. The number of possible return values. Uh, oh, this was the function virtual. This was from the C++ documentation. This is something that we're gonna be talking about later with the B table object, but again, different video. The invocation, invocation type indicates whether this is a property function, and if so, which type? So again, this helps us define, is this a property? If so, what type of property? The calling convention, the return type. I wasn't able to get a description on this one, so unfortunately I'm not entirely sure what that is. Um, keep in mind, there's a lot of functions, and so I'm just gonna do the first 20 and hopefully you'll be able to see kind of what's going on here. So let's go down to ones that we're kind of familiar with. We don't care about these ones. Okay, here's our friendly application object. We now have information related to the documentation. This one, if I remember correctly, is the member ID. And then we get the, the name. 
I don't think this one takes any arguments. So this one doesn't take any arguments. Um, we get the return type, calling convention, two. So this, if two is a property, two is a property, if I remember correctly. I have to remember all these numbers. <laughs> it's not like you have to, when you work with these things, like I'm trying to remember all the numbers and it's driving me crazy. I like, I'm the worst when it comes to remembering numbers and meanings. Um, optional parameters, function flags, uh, you know, just tons of good information in here. Um, and then really, this is what's being leveraged when we do ensure dispatch with the Win32.com library. Um, it's basically taking all of this information and then auto-generating code. So it's getting all the methods and properties about it. And then you can see all the stuff that we need to build those functions is right here. The number of parameters, what those parameters are, you know, what the return types are, you know, just a lot of different things in here that can be leveraged if we want it to. So very useful stuff. And hopefully you guys can figure out more unique ways of leveraging it. But hopefully this is useful you know, down the road if you want to get a better understanding of just what the objects are and what you're working with. And again, you can do this with any of the COM objects that you're working with. That's the nice thing about COM. It, there's a system behind the scenes that you can leverage to get all the information about that object. Okay, so we're going to talk about the final example. Um, then one here is we're going to get the number of variables that belong to our particular COM object. So we're going to do Excel type attribute, and then we're going to do count variables. I'm going to go back to the documentation. And so from here, uh, so right now I haven't encountered an object that actually returns anything. So it's kind of hard to say exactly what it's doing. Um, but the get variable description retrieves a variable description object. And so if you go in here, Again, it has a lot of same information. So member ID, object value, element description, variable flags, um, kind of flags, just, just different information that, again, you're gonna have to kind of understand what your kind of use case is, but this is where the information lives. And if you wanna access that information, you get the number of variables and then you just loop through it like we did before. So we're gonna say for i in range zero, number of variables, and then we're going to say <clears throat> Excel variable description equals Excel type info, and then get variable description. And then we're going to pass through our, our I. And then we'll display our Excel variable description. Oh, forgot my colon. And this is the problem. So there was none. And that's the problem I've been running into with all my objects so far is I haven't found one yet that actually has anything. Um, so it's kind of hard to tell exactly how to, what's exactly it's being used for. But, um, you know, if I come across something, I'll try to put up a video or something or just incorporate it in another video. But do know it exists. Do know that this is how you leverage it if you need to leverage it at all. Maybe you have more experience with this particular type of method, so you might know something. But hopefully, um, you know, you're finding all this uh, information useful because this is this is really the core of your COM objects. This is how you get your COM objects. This is how you get all the information about your COM objects. It's through the type info object. And really behind the scenes in Win32COM, this is what they're doing. They're, this is how they're auto-generating that code. This is how they're invoking methods and all this type of information. So. That's why I think it's so important to understand these particular objects because they're being leveraged so heavily. It's ridiculous how heavily you know they're being leveraged. So um, that actually concludes this video. So if you got any questions about this particular object or just anything that we discussed here, please put them down in the comments below. I will try to get back to you. I'll be making sure to put up the documentation for this. I do have it typed up. Um, I have a couple that I need to put up to GitHub. Don't worry, they're coming. But I've already explained before, I'm picky about wording. Um, and then also, if you could, please make sure to like the video. We always appreciate the support. And if you're not already, please make sure to subscribe to the channel so that way you get regular updates. Thanks again for watching, everybody. We'll see you in the next video where we are going to talk about CLR with Iron Python.